Welcome to the CBFR podcast. What's um, up? We're we're here to to bring you movies and beer. And, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's that's the 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 baseline, isn't it? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, so today we are going to be talking about the uh, box office from the 1930s. Yes. So we're going to talk about the movie that was the highest grossed earner, highest grossing earner, mm-hmm. uh, and two of the kind of other top five or ten uh, films sometimes that are difficult to get a hold of because they may be out of print. Uh, out of print or completely lost. Yeah. Um, and then there's others where we're just like, I'm not watching that because there's a <laughs> lot of uh, very bad, no longer used racial issues in it, and I don't want to watch that if I can avoid it. Yeah. Um, so let me give you a quick rundown of the movies we are watching, or not watching. Huh. We're going to watch we, the whole we movie We watched today. those. <laughs> Uh, the, the three movies we're going to talk about today. So, for the 1930 box office winner, it was Whoopi. And just a quick synopsis of that is Western Sheriff Bob Wells is preparing to marry Sally Morgan. She loves part Indian Waninus. Uh, but Sally flees with hypochondriac Henry Williams, who thinks he's just giving her a ride. But she left a note saying they've eloped. Uh, and then chasing them are jilted Bob, Henry's nurse, Mary, who's been trying to seduce him, and others. Mm-hmm. Um, that's Whoopi. Uh, then we're also going to be talking about Hell's Angels. So quick synopsis there. We have brothers Monty and Ray leave Oxford to join the Royal Flying Corps. Ray loves Helen. Helen enjoys an affair with Monty. Before they leave on their mission over Germany, they find her uh, still in another man's arms. Hence and the conflict. Exactly. And the last movie we're going to be talking about today is The Dawn Patrol, which is World War I ace Dick Courtney decides the leadership of his senior officer. Um, wait a minute. I, I read that wrong. So, hey, that's awesome. Try again. Take two. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> beep, beep. Uh, actually, may I typed this wrong. World War I ace Dick Courtney <laughs> derides the leadership of his superior officer, but Courtney is soon promoted to squadron commander and learns harsh lessons about sending subordinates to their deaths. I promise I'm not dyslexic, but <laughs> decides and derides, you, you just assume it says decides and move Ooh, on. he card read good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm fantastic at uh, the uh, word smithing. Yes. Word smith. <laughs> that is a thing. You're, you're, you're on. You're good. <laughs> Oh, goodness. But, yeah, those are the three flicks we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. But before we do our deep dives of the things we liked, didn't like, and the fucks up, fuck ups along the way, including me saying fucks ups. Beep. uh, (laughs) We need a dump button. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Let's talk about uh, our craft beer of the day. Indeed. So what do we got here, Tony? So this is from a brewery um, from the faraway land of Iceland. I like that can. Um, They're from a uh, town on the north side of the island called Akiyuri. Um, This is Einstuck. Um, This is their, one of their core offerings this is their arctic lager okay um lagers are not generally on the hoppier side this one is Mm -hmm. um just kind of a little play off you know the standard feel i love their logo yeah with the viking Viking. on there that's really cool um they they make their beer with um glacial water from from the island oh really yeah it's it's a super cool like setup that they have um okay. I, i'm a big fan of their stuff they started dis, uh, distribution here uh two three ish years ago mm-hmm. um they're anytime that they start distributing in a new territory they they throw out like oh we've conquered this state and that type of stuff <laughs> it's kind of cool um i'm a big fan of their beer um everything that i've had from them has been really really good um, and the fact that it's, I mean, it's international and we get it here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, so. that's, that's really cool. So yeah, it's got, I mean, I, I, I like the color, this blue and it, it's like, it's a flat blue. So it's not mm-hmm. as like, you know, shiny as mm-hmm. some of the other ones, but yeah, they got the little Viking logo here. And is this supposed to be the coordinates where they're at? Cause it shows North 65 degrees, West 18 degrees. Do you, I, do, I think that's what that is. I, I haven't confirmed it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where their brewery is. Cause that would be pretty cool if they're putting in the actual like physical coordinates of where mm-hmm. their brewery's at. And did you already know how this was pronounced because of the little double dots over the O or did you have to look it up? Um, so I had a guess, but I looked it up and confirmed that I was Einstuck. correct. Einstuck. 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 Olgird? Olgird. Olgird. 
and it's got those two crossed axes uh, and at the bottom too. That's really cool. Um, this makes me want to go play um, uh, the yeah, Assassin's Creed game that you got to be Vikings. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I played, yeah. I, I played the shit out of that game. <laughs> but I was like, this just makes you go like, oh, I want to go be a Viking again. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of their stuff. Um, if if I ever make it to to Iceland, I I'm gonna try and make it a point to actually visit the brewery. Okay, well here let me read this on the back here real quick. Uh, Iceland's magnificent glaciers draw curious legions from around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> this glacier-inspired hoppy lag lager. <laughs> Logger. Long oh, no, a. I know. Long as soon a. as I got halfway through the word, I was like, I'm stupid. Long A. Oh, God. This glacier-inspired hoppy lager is crisp and refreshing with a smooth mouthfeel and is packed with citra hops for a bright citrusy aroma and flavor for all adventurous Vikings. Mm-hmm. No, it's, I like this can. Oh, they like, even have like this weird little like pixelated like ice diamond thing of the the Viking, oh, the Viking. here on the side yeah. too. That's 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 really cool. Yeah, All right, I'm, I'm a big fan of their stuff. I I hope you like this. If not, that's fine. I do a lot. <laughs> There's that can pop. There you go. <laughs> All right, cheers, sir. Cheers. Skull. That is very hoppy. The initial, I hate the word mouthfeel. Uh, <laughs> it actually applies in this case. <laughs> but the initial, like, you know, when it hits your, uh, hits your mouth and everything's going down, like, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. um, it does have that very strong aftertaste uh, that's very strong in the hops. The, the bitter, yeah. Um, that uh, probably one of the things that normally makes me go, mm, but it, it doesn't hit you right off the front of it. It, it kind of sneaks in the backside. Mm-hmm. That sounded way kinkier than I meant it. <laughs> it's it's the back end is the is the the term that's generally used. It's not bad, honestly. Um, I still don't think it's something I'd be like, oh, give me a fucking Einstuck. Mm -hmm. Um, to where I'd be like loving it and ordering it all the time. But you have found another one that I think I'll be able to finish. That's all right. So that's uh, that's at least a step. So that's in the right that's direction. two, I think. Yeah, so far two. two. I, I don't remember what the other one was. <laughs> um, that was the. I know it was an IPA, if I recall. Uh, that was um, the Odell IPA, I believe. Maybe I don't remember. I think. But yeah, I I really like this stuff. I, I like everything that everything I've had from them. I've, I've really enjoyed. Yeah, no, I mean, if nothing, just the can alone is pretty cool. I like that. Um. Myself, I am playing another round of cleaning the shit drawer out of my uh, <laughs> liquor cabinet. What random stuff do we have lying around? <laughs> More stuff that my wife has purchased and then never drank. And I'm just trying to get through this stuff because uh, it gives you the same effect that you're needing, which is, you know, getting a little buzz going and... I don't want to like buy more of my good expensive stuff that I'm out of until I get rid of this shit. Makes sense. Um, so I have a Smirnoff Ice Red, White, and Berry. Ooh, Alka Pop. Uh, blue Raspberry, Cherry, and Citrus. And that's right. I said Raspberry because there's a fucking P in it. <laughs> we're we're going to get dumped. We're going to get so demonetized. You've cursed so much this time. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> this is an adult's channel. We're drinking beer. Yes, this, okay? is, not, this is not Coco Melon, bro. Okay? Where, where's Caillou? He's hanging out in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what's the little blue dog one? Uh, is Bluey. Blue? Bluey, Bluey. Bluey. Yeah, this is not Bluey. This is your daddy's Bluey. Yeah, this the, we, um, we, we play Bluey for the dog when we leave, so he's got some, some background noise no and shit. voices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It, it, it helps him. So, But hey, this one's a, a limited edition. Ooh. Um, yeah, we'll figure Define that out limited. in a second. Uh, limited in the sense that it was probably in every fucking liquor store. Mm. Um. So it's really Maybe hard it wasn't at Walmart or something. I don't know. It's probably at Walmart. They missed too. one gas station. So it was limited because it wasn't in that gas station. Oh, okay. That <laughs> totally clears that up. Because we're like freaking everywhere. <laughs> um, and then we have Margaritaville Tropical Punch. It is a mango peach paradise were you, with were a you, little parrot on it. Were you wasted away? I, I might be when I finish this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a malt beverage with natural flavors and certified color. Certified color? That means someone looked at it and said, yep, that's a color. <laughs> <laughs> Looks orange to me. We're good. Look, looks good to me, boss. <laughs> 
Oh, God. See, that, that brings to mind the next question. Is there an independent certification board for colors? In it's, which case, how do I apply? Right? Yeah. I want to be able to go like, <laughs> yep, that's a color. Yep. You, right on. <laughs> Stamp. You're done. Oh, freak. Okay. Um, well, since I brought two of these bad boys up, which should I open first? Whichever you want, boss. Ah, oh, man. I was trying to make you decide. Um, no, that way if you hate it, you can't blame me. <laughs> but, I mean, I already get to blame you if I hate a beer you bring. Uh, well, I mean, that's my job. I'm supposed to find stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll do a red, white, and berry. Perfect. All right. That was acceptable. That was good. That is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's always great when you take a drink of something and recoil. <laughs> yeah, you're like, <laughs> It's not that it's like horrible, but it's like it. It tastes like very strong Kool Aid. Got it. Okay. What what's the ABV on that? Was it eight nine? Probably like four. Four. Four point five percent. Oh man! So it's it's not even the the burn that's getting you. No, it's just, it's very sweet. Oh my god! Making your teeth rot. Uh, yeah, that that'll that'll just sit right there, and I'll try one more thing. <laughs> Before we break into the movies. Awesome. Y'all are getting a three for today. <laughs> yeah, but see, they're not getting all the history and everything with these two. This is just, hey, the shit I found in my cabinet and I need to get rid of. That'll play. Okay, so you're not recoiling in that, that'll, That's That's not bad. That's good. The, the mango peach. Yep. That's not bad. It's still... It, I mean, it's only... Four percent on this one, so it's still essentially like you know, uh, grown up juice. Hey, you know, <laughs> it's not bad having the smaller stuff. I mean, because like for this, this one's like four seven, and like I mean, if you're sitting down to watch a football game or you know you're hanging out with your friends yeah. or something like that, you can have uh, you know a couple of them, and not be like completely trashed at two in the afternoon. And that's very true. Um, since I'm not the beer drinker and I'm usually the hey, give me a give me a bourbon, you know, kind mm. of thing. Um, that's when I see the four percent and I'm like, Oh, it's little kid juice. Yeah. Well, no, 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 scratch that. Don't kids. It's not for kids. No, it's not. But, <laughs> but I mean like it's it's different because like some of the beers that I really like are like nine, ten, eleven, twelve percent. Yeah. But I can only do one of those and that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm having to, to exercise more self control in my own age. You know, one of these days, um, we might have to just, like, for a random, like, extra episode when we're not doing our normal craft brews. we be like, all right, we're breaking into this wine. Or we're breaking into this whiskey. You know, just, yeah. just a random little offshoot for shits and grits. I already got, like, three or four whiskeys I can bring. I got, I, I, I know the good stuff. Uh, I know a, a local wine that I really like I could bring. All right. Uh, right represent the... I'm not a huge fan of wine, but I'll try it. I'm pretty sure you've had the wine that I would bring. Maybe. So, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but no, that's that's for your your beer one you brought there. That's a not 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 a bad one to check out. Um, if anyone's wanting to look into them, it is a uh, einstuckbeer.com. So that's e i n s t o k b e e r dot com. Mm -hmm. And they've got like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram too. But you can go to their website and maybe they'll tell you where their stuff's at if they want to try it. Yeah, they they have like a little. Um... Uh, a little beer finder on their website where you can yeah. put in your location and it'll show like different bottle shops around well, that's cool. that actually carry this stuff. Yeah. Do a lot of like craft brews or beer places do that? S some do, some don't. Hmm. Um, I mean, it'd be helpful if you want to try. You can yeah. See what's the, the trick is it, it depends a lot on if they update it. Yeah, I guess that's true. Cause there are some that like, cause I've, you know, tried that friends have given me from, from out of the area or something like that. I'm like, Oh, I'd really like to try that. And you, you know, like, well, I don't know where I'm looking. So you type in their little thing on the website and like, oh, they got it right here. So you go there. Mm -hmm. No, we, they haven't actually distributed in that state in three years. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I which has that. happened to me more than once. <laughs> so funny. it's very handy if they update it, which I'm pretty sure they do. That's good. Well, yeah, um, that, that one's worth, I would say worth trying out just because it's one that I didn't immediately like, oh, I'm going to dump this in the sink. Yep. So it's I, I, I like to look it. Into. I, I really like their stuff. Um, and and like I said, it's it's super cool, especially all the way from Iceland. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh well, let's get into the movies, Indeed. and we'll start with Whoopi. 
And I say it that way because it is uh, literally two O's, two E's, and an exclamation point. Whoopee! Mm-hmm. Um, that's not what the, that's not what the title is referring to, though. It's no, it's, it's not. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get into that because I, I picked that up before I, I realized. <laughs> um, so, uh, a little extra information on it. We already read the synopsis, but it's directed by Thornton Freeland, uh, starring Eddie Cantor as Henry Williams, Eleanor Hunt as Sally Morgan, Paul Gregory as Weninus, which is hard to look at that and not think penis. Um, <laughs> Jack Rutherford as Sheriff Bob Wells. Uh, and Ethel Shutta as Shutta. Mary Custer. Um, according to what I found, it had a production budget of $1.3 million and a box office return of $2.65 million. Uh, it is actually currently included among the American Film Institute's 2000 list of the 500 movies nominated for the top 100 funniest American movies. And I'm going to say right there, whoever created this list... Does not have a fucking sense of humor. <laughs> I, I did not find it at all funny. Yeah. It, it's the, uh, Clearly, I was not the audience for this particular film. I'm not sure anyone under the age of 80 was. I could see that. When was that list created, does it say? Uh, I don't know but it, whether it was exactly created, but it's Film Institute's 2000 list, so the year 2000. Okay, so 20 It's of the 500 funny... Ago. Or wait... It had 500 movies nominated uh, for the top 100 uh, American movies. Okay, so maybe it's not listed in the top 100, but it is in the 500 movies that was nominated. And I'm like, you couldn't find 400 else? Ni- like 500 <laughs> movies funnier than this? Because yeah. I probably could. Yeah, I, you, you really could. I, I was, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. <laughs> but it's, a, it's also based on a Broadway show. Um, Clearly. That was produced... <laughs> Uh, by Florence Ziegfeld Jr. in December of 1928. It ran for 407 performances. Uh, but then Ziegfeld lost everything in the stock market crash of 1929. Ooh. So he closed the show in November of 29 and sold the movie rights to Samuel Goldwyn. And that's how the movie came to be. Which, if I'm not mistaken, um, a number of the actors in this film were actually the actors in the state show. Okay. Makes sense. Is that way you don't have they don't have to teach everything. They already know it. Yeah, a lot of yeah. the set pieces in this felt like they were ripped right from Broadway anyway. They might have been. I don't know. They might save have been. money, just bring the stuff over. Um, <laughs> my first comment about this though is apparently it's a musical. So I figured as soon as it started, you must have been pissed. I was not thrilled because <laughs> I, I sat down and started to watch it, and I'm like, and there's a ten minute song and dance piece. Okay. <laughs> Wait, okay, that opening number was freaking weird. With like, uh, the, the cowgirls were on like guys' shoulders and doing this like weird wave thing yeah, yeah, that yeah. was like they were going up and down. That was really odd. But yeah, um, for those that don't know, Tony hates musicals. Not a fan. I am not a fan. I, I yet in this project, I'm willing to completely waste my time and watch these movies. Um, no, like it. The the whole movie started out with that big song and dance number. And they're wearing like all these like you know bright pastel colors and all mm-hmm. this other stuff. And one of the dudes like chops in. He's like, "Oh, we just ran twenty miles today. Bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> you guys look freshly clean from the dry, you know the dry cleaners. There's no way that you wore those outfits twenty miles riding." <laughs> oh goodness. Um. No, I, I totally agree. Like, had this weird. It was a really long opening number mm-hmm. of them like dancing around and. Doing like these stuff. little circle thingies, and you know, I, I, I I'm not a fan. I, I, I mean, again, it's it's a Broadway show, so it makes sense. But I mean, it, it's it's one thing when they have a reason to be there, yeah. Versus like la da 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 da, and then they just like disappear behind like set pieces, and then the real actors come out, yeah. And then it's just like, in what world? Unless these are like flash mobs, are you just walking down the street and like people are singing and dancing, taking up the whole street, and then just dissipate? Well, they they were they were all going for that that wedding, right? Well, because they they showed up like the sheriff's getting married, and I I okay. But didn't they all kind of at least most of them disappear before that happened? So were they there for the wedding, or were well, they there no, just like to they, dance they, before they, the wedding? They kind of like broke off into little, you know, they just kind of disappeared. They all came back for the actual like wedding a little bit later in the movie. 
Because there was another song and dance thing leading into it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that leads into... So, essentially, um, Sally Morgan has been betrothed uh, somewhat against her will to the sheriff, Bob Wells. The most generic name ever. <clears throat> Bob Wells. <laughs> um, hey, you know, Wells is the last name of the, the guy in The Flash. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember what his first name was. Tom, maybe? T- I don't know. Um, that's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> but, so, I might breeze through some of this plot point, so feel free to stop me when I'm going too fast. I may not. Because, <laughs> essentially, that's that's the beginning of the movie. These two people are meant to marry, and yep. Sally's like, this she is don't bullshit. Wanna. I don't want to marry him. I want to marry Waninus. Um... But her father does not approve of Waninus. I'm, I'm, I'm going to slip up and say penis at least once. <laughs> does not approve of Waninus. Uh, is it Waninus or Waninus? It was, it was Waninus. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Um, but does not approve of Waninus. I did pay attention to this movie, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> because he is part Indian. Um, and so she, he's just like, no, you're not, you're not marrying this person because of his <laughs> bloodline and you're going to marry the sheriff. And then Sally's like, fuck this. I'm, I'm leaving. Yep. Um, and then there was the around other. that point. Yeah. We meet Eddie Cantor who is apparently, that was the actor's name, right? No. Uh, yeah. Sorry. 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 Henry Williams. Yeah. Eddie Cantor's the actor's name. We meet Henry Williams who, is a hypochondriac, think he has every illness under the sun, and his nurse is there, like, giving him all these meds while trying to get him into bed. Mm-hmm. And she's and not very for, forward. like, him to get rest. She's like, take off your pants, let's do this. Um, and he's like, no, no, no. Um, my first instinct was, is Henry Williams supposed to be, like, an early Rick Moranis? I have, I, I, this is... Obviously, like, they didn't know Rick Moranis way no, back then, no, but no. I was like, it, it, it reminded me of him, but way more overblown. Uh, Rick Moranis, to me, is, is, yeah, he had a little bit of that, I guess, but he was always very charming. And, yeah. You know, very funny and kind of drew you into it. Yeah, like, I like Rick Moranis. I did this not like This annoyed me. <laughs> yeah. It, it was like Rick Moranis on Overdrive, turned to 11. It, it's, it was way too over the top yeah. for me. I get, you know, trying to exaggerate everything for comedic effect, but this was too much. Yeah. Um, and then, like, <laughs> I noticed it several times with the film. So he's, like, talking to her, telling her no. And I don't really pay much attention at first. But then you see him talking to other people. And their faces are, like, right here. And they're, like, talking like you and I are right now. Like, it's nothing. But their noses are damn near touching. I, I, I That just seemed really off-putting to me. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, because, you know, personal bubble and all that. Um, maybe they just had the one microphone above them <laughs> that's and so they a, had to sneak in you know so they could actually get get audio that's for everything. probably not a, a bad idea as to why that happened just, i didn't think about it from a technical perspective i'm just like why are y'all so close back up that, you know, they, they were they were very friendly very friendly I, I guess like their, their hands might have been doing something under the camera i don't know <laughs> um, <laughs> i i don't know but so then there's um we end up meeting like when Enos is like talking about how he still wants to be with sally and we meet his father, Black Eagle. Mm-hmm. Did it make you uncomfortable with the way Black Eagle is being portrayed? It was the very stereotypical, you know, Native American movie portrayal from from that that yeah. time frame. Very, very stereotypical. Yeah, I mean, I, I was like, I, I I let it go because of that, but also I was just like, that part made it a little difficult to watch. Not as much as some of those other movies we watched with blackface, um, but just the. Mm. Black Eagle say no. Yeah. Mm. Indian never lie. I, I, yeah, like, it's, it's stupid. But, the, but I I, again, it's but very... for the time, yeah. I, I, it's, it's tough because you, you really... I mean, we've talked about this at length, but you, you try to keep that in that lens, in that mind frame, but it's still just like, uh, this is bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like this at all. But essentially, Black Eagle is saying the same thing. It's like, you know, it'll never work. You're part Indian. Let her go. Right. Um, and at that point, Sally's just like, you know what? Screw this shit. I'm, I'm gonna leave. Um, at that point, I think 
remind me if I'm wrong here. She was like up in her room that had a balcony. Like a Rapunzel type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And she was um, gonna, she was telling um, Henry Williams to like, hey, like, I need you to give me a ride to where the wedding's gonna be. In reality, she's, you know, runaway bride. Um, but she doesn't tell him that. She's like, I'm, I, I need you to give me a ride to where we're going. And there's a ladder that goes up to her balcony and somebody was told to like protect the the ladder to make sure nobody goes up because they were after, um, I think they were after Winnie's at that point. They just wanted to make sure that he didn't get up to her. Uh, and the only reason I bring this up is because he started to go up the ladder and you hear this little pew. Yeah, somebody and, took a shot at yeah, him. Yeah, and then he yeah. jumps down like, oh, 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 like he's like he's been shot off the ladder. And then the guy comes from behind some buildings and walks out into the courtyard. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how fucking bend the bullet are we doing in this movie for you to have shot him from where you he, were? He was he was one of the originators and wanted. I that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like he did the little like around <laughs> fucking Angelina Jolie, you know. <laughs> oh gosh. No, the whole the, the it, it was it was very Rapunzel ish. Um, because if yeah, they, that wasn't the first time they'd taken a shot at somebody or no. Um, um, uh, when Ninas had gone up up that ladder or something like that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, they shot at Winninas too. Yeah, that's and right. And he came down and they were like, what were you doing up there? And then the sheriff kind of stepped in like, you know, shoot anybody that crawls up the ladder. That's right. And then that's when Henry did it and they took a shot at him. Yeah. He was like, who are you? Who's going there? Oh, it's just you. Yeah. I don't have to worry about you. Yeah, no, I remember that now. Um, well, speaking of which, when she was up on the balcony, she did this weird thing. She was just like, had her hand, she's like, What's going on? How are you doing? Can we can we go and like go do something? And her hand's just like sitting here, like this, like it made me think of the what was it Will Ferrell when he's just like, I don't know what to do with my hands, oh. <laughs> and she's just standing there talking with like this hand out, and it's like, anyways, that's just a random thing that I saw. And I was I like, don't what know the what fuck? to do with my hands? <laughs> um, but okay, so <laughs> uh, right before like they take off, um. And Henry's like trying to explain himself. He he makes a joke to the people that you said that were like, you know, oh, it's just you. He makes a joke to them. And it wasn't funny. I don't remember what the joke was. But what I did notice was Henry makes a joke. And then they all pause and just stand there for a second like they're in a sitcom. Wait, wait, no wait, laugh, laugh track. Yeah. So I'm like, was this maybe because of the 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 play? And so they're just so used to pausing right there. So they had to go, la da 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 da, chicken cross the road. Wait. Pause for pause for applause. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, but there's no applause and no live audience, so it just it stuck out to me each time they did the, that. The whole movie stream, screamed of like, we're just going to film a Broadway play, like Without with no audience. alterations, yeah. no changes, no nothing. <clears throat> we're just going to film it as it's performed, and then that's going to be our movie. Yeah, yeah. So I, it, yeah, that would make sense if they were pausing for you know just even the natural breaks from the Broadway show and all this other stuff. Like we're not changing a damn thing. Just go. No, that makes total sense. Because um, I, I saw that and I was literally just like, I wonder if that's because of the play. That's where they would normally pause and be like, ha, 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 all right, keep going. Um, but then he sings this song, Whoopi. Yep. And I don't remember why he broke into song. Do you remember? No. Okay, but he just suddenly just starts cause. singing the song, Making Whoopi. And that's when it clicked for me. I was like, Whoopi is slang for sex. Yes. That, this movie is literally called Sex. Yes. <laughs> Making Whoopi. Yeah, I was just like, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, so at that point, Sally. Wait, no, he, okay. So he, he broke into song, like, um, he was talking about just women in general. Like you don't want to fall for him cause you know, or this, this was after the, the nurse was like trying to get him or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I can't trust women cause that's all they want. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> all they want to do is fuck. Yeah. <laughs> all I want to do is fuck. Anyways. Um. Anywho. <laughs> no, isn't that, isn't that song? All I... I don't remember. Anyways. Um. Yeah, so she's like, take me to the wedding. So they go get in the car and leave. Uh, and at some point... Well, she, he was, he was, she was conning him to take him to, like, hey, can you drive me to this other place? Because I don't want to deal with all this big wedding stuff. The sheriff and I are just going to elope and then leave. That's right. That's yeah. right. I knew it had to do with them getting married, but I forgot they were going to elope. She was saying they were going to elope. That makes sense. Um, well, <laughs> after they left and the sheriff realized they're gone... I don't know why this was funny to me, but he's just standing around his people. He's like, Jim, Jack, Joe, Tech Slim. We got to go catch him. I, I, I caught the same thing too. I was like, that's every Texan nickname ever. <laughs> oh, 
oh. So I'm just like, we ought to go find her. Jim Jack Jones, Tech Slim. <laughs> there, there were, yeah, that, that was like, that's every stereotypical, like, cowboy nickname uh, ever. I, it, yeah, it's, it, then they found the note, like, oh, I'm, I'm eloping with, with Henry. Which threw me off. Yeah. Like, why would she say that she's eloping with Henry? Um, just to throw him off. I, I, or that or he was the one dope that she decided to, I'm going to rope into this whole thing. Yeah, I guess. Um, but on the way to wherever the hell they were going, they ran out of gas. And I don't know much about cars from the 1920s and 30s, or many cars in general, but he was checking if the car had enough gas by sticking like a ruler down in the tank oh, in it was front in the of the seat. seat. Yeah, I was just, I was like, is that really how they used to have to check for gas? I have no idea. I I, I, I mean, don't... it makes sense like oil dipstick, but still, I was like, that's crazy. I I have no idea. I I didn't bother to to actually you know double check. <laughs> well, I mean, like. Obviously, they didn't have electronics to do all the stuff that we have in cars today, but like, it's one of those things that you don't think about because mm. you're just like you have your modern day whatever, and then you see something how something was done, you know, almost a hundred years ago, and you're just like, the fuck, like, because yeah. we don't have to think about how would you check your gas without all the little digital stuff that tells you all on all your dashboard what dads. your gas is today. Yeah. So it makes sense, but I was like, oh, it's kind of cool to see. I don't know. Um. I would assume it's accurate, but I have I have no I I don't have the knowledge to confirm that. Why not? Just because I don't. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not an expert on 1920s cars. That's what you're here for. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so what the hell have we been doing this whole time? <laughs> Building up to this. <laughs> what have I done with my life? <laughs> oh god. Okay. So while they were out of gas. Another car pulls up behind them and was like, you know, bitching at them to get out of the way. Um, it's a single lane road on the side of a cliff and mm-hmm. they're just like, move over so we can pass. And I'm like, uh, we can't. Where? <laughs> there, there's about that much room. Yeah. You, get your car across it. Not happening. You guys are going to have to help us here. But then they start, like this little hold up thing happens where. It escalated rather quickly to armed robbery. Yeah. Yeah. Where <laughs> Henry is like stealing shit from them to. Stealing gas, gas in their car. And, and there was this whole comedic sequence with, with like him dropping the gun and everybody going after it. And he's like, oh, I didn't actually drop it at all. That whole scene was, was just like grating on my nerves. I'm stupid. like, this is not funny. But at the same time, maybe it was funny back then. But it was stupid today. Uh, comedy has evolved, apparently. Um, <laughs> As with all things. Yeah, and he made like some reference to like Henry Ford or something, and I was like, this was funny a hundred years ago? So I don't know. Um, but yeah, they had this whole hold-up scene. He gets some spare gas from them and then drives to where they're going. And it ends up being the same place that the other car was going. And I didn't pick up. Did the other car, like, the other car like had a guy in it that was supposedly like wealthy. Was that, I can't remember, that wasn't his place. It was like some, it was like some hotel or yeah, something. Yeah, it was something they were stopping on on the way. And yeah. they just happened to stop at the same place for, you know, for food and, and gas and all that other stuff. Yeah, and then the guy that he robbed and Henry meet up in the kitchen because the guy that owned the place was like, I need a cook. Oh, here's a person. You be the cook. And just made him the cook. Yeah, he, he, was, he, was, he was like um, just grabbed and like you now you're the cook and if you don't i'll shoot you yeah um, <laughs> so that's how job interviews went back in the 1930s uh-huh <laughs> uh and then for some reason like they they were asking for waffles but they kept over and over and over pronouncing it waffles, waffles. that that's what the the dude wanted he was like he was like well, what do you want it's like well, i want waffles got it i'll make you a waffle and then he started throwing in like eggshells and there was this book piece and Basically, everything he could find went into a bowl. But he was also singing the song, Making Waffles, just yeah. like the Making Whoopi. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why the hell do they keep mispronouncing waffles? I, I don't why know. is that? Is that considered funny? I, I don't know. Is that is that how it's actually pronounced? Waffles? See, it didn't occur to me that maybe over the last century we've change the pronunciation from waffles to waffles yeah if if it's if it's uh let, let us know that's if, an interesting theory am i giving them shit for fucking it up and we're the ones fucking it up it's i don't i didn't look i didn't bother huh. to actually confirm it that is 
That's a thought. Yeah, that would like stop me in my tracks. See, mm. see, see. Maybe you do we, keep me maybe around we here. We don't for know something. how to pronounce things. <laughs> you know, like raspberry. Anyways, um, <laughs> I like raspberry. <laughs> I, I'm just I, I always when people like put a Z in it instead of the SP, and I'm like, it's not a raspberry, it's a raspberry. But that's just me. Maybe being it's a, a little, silent P. Maybe it's being a butthead. Um, I know it's me being a butthead. What so. else? I was gonna say, what else is new? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but but see, I I'm aware of that fact. You accept it. I am it? accepting it and comfortable with the fact that I say raspberries and I have stupid annoyances. Um, <laughs> that is your personal truth. <laughs> and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> um, but then in the middle of him trying to make waffles, uh, the two men start comparing like surgeries. Apparently, they're both hypochondriacs. <laughs> And they're rolling on the floor, digging into each other's pants and looking down at their crotches and up their shirts. Yep. I don't, I don't, <sighs> again, I don't, I guess that's what passed for humor. I didn't find it funny. Yeah, I'm like, if I saw two men rolling on the floor and digging in each other's pants, I don't think it's comedy. I think I better leave because I'm about to see a porno. Make, yeah. It, it's, I, I don't know. I, I teach his own, like, hey, make a porno. I don't give a shit, but. I, I have no. I don't even know where to start with that particular scene. Like it was so over the top and like, I don't know what they were trying to do. Yeah. Um, but again, it was like that same little silly comedy thing. Like, Oh, I got this scar here. You want to see it? And I got it all the way down here and I got stabbed over here and I've had like, you know, 11 liver surgeries and all this other crap. Like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only thing I could muster was I don't care. Well, that's the byline of this movie. Um, <laughs> And so while we're there, and they're dealing with their their waffle situation and uh, <laughs> cross grabbing, um, everybody that's looking for them just randomly shows up, including the nurse who's, who's like wearing a dressed must- like a man. Yeah, dressed like a man with a mustache and a cowboy hat for some damned reason. Yeah, for reasons. Uh, and I'm like, D- did their car have a fucking Apple tag on it? How do they just randomly find them maybe, without searching anywhere else? Maybe it's the one town. Like outside of the the starter town, within like a hundred miles. Like if they're going anywhere, they're gonna they're gonna go there. Then you would think if that's the only town there, don't go there. Keep driving. Don't don't ask me, man. I didn't write the damn thing. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> they had to move the plot along. Okay. I, what plot? Um... <laughs> man, you're not wrong. So we're not done talking about the movie, but can you guess what my review is gonna be of it? Um... Because this next thing is going to be a big indicator. With them all there and knowing that, you know, he's... I, I can't remember if at this point he knew that... Uh, Henry knew that she had said that they were eloping. Or if he just thought he was in trouble. I don't remember, but he was trying to hide from them. Um, and he hides in the stove. Yeah, jumped, jumped in the oven. And while in the stove, apparently all the soot in you there. You see where this is going? <laughs> he pops back out. Somebody and, had somebody had lit it and it, it blew up. Yeah. So it just kind of poofed in his face. And he pops back out in fucking blackface. Yep. So when we went through these films, choosing what we're going to watch, we specifically avoided ones that we saw had blackface. This one just jumped out of nowhere. Moving on. I, um. I so like for that particular thing, like if they were gonna play it up as a, a like, oh, you know, the soot got him from the oven, and then like the very next scene, like you know, he was all cleaned up and whatever. Okay, but it kept going. Yeah, he 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 kept <laughs> like his clothes were clean, but his skin was all black. Right. That that's um. that's what got me. Like they stayed in. They stayed with it mm-hmm. for like this. This this particular part happened um, maybe a little less than half into the movie, and they stayed with it until like the last twenty minutes or something, something like that. But again, like if it was just planted up for the gag, like oh the stove blew up, yeah, okay, not my favorite, but I I see what they were going for. But then they just stuck with it, and then like right after that. Um, like he, you know, they played it up and, you know, he left and he was outside and saw, um, what's her name? The, the actress outside. Sally. Sally. And he walked up to her like, Hey, and she's like, how dare you speak to me? Like, Oh, now we're going to go to racism too. (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was not not comfortable. I didn't I didn't enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, like obviously, there's been films since then of Dead in Blackface in varying degrees, but I feel like this one took that extra step as as, uh, as it did with because, everything like, else. The big area around his mouth yeah. that did not have the the stuff on it, and everything. Yeah. I'm just like. Yeah, it was not not enjoyable. Not I, I was not comfortable watching it. I, uh-huh. um, it, it I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, but yeah, so he he gets back out into the courtyard, like you said, Randy yeah. Sally, and they're like, "We need to get out of here and everything." And one of the guys that was with the sheriff looking for her, like, stumbles across them. Uh, but like Henry hides right beforehand, or goes in the garage as they're talking, or something. Yep. Yeah. Um, and he, and this guy's talking to Sally and then Henry like reaches out from like a window or something and just like smacks the guy in the head and knocks him out. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that they can like try to get out of there and like the whole mob shows up. Um, the reason I bring that up is eventually as you know, the mob caught up to him and talking to like, Hey, where, what were you doing? And trying to like figure out if who this black guy is heavy quotations on black guy. Um, the guy that Henry hit eventually wakes up because back out of the garage and walks up like, he did it! I'm like, he, if he snuck up behind you and popped you in the head, how the hell do you know it was him? I'll give you three guesses. Let's see. Could it be <laughs> plot for <laughs> moving along? Because the script says so. Or, lastly, could it be because they're doing more racism? Maybe all three. Probably um, all three. Anyways. So that stuck out to me. Uh, and then the other big thing is like, so when they're out there talking to him, this is like the second or third time this has happened. They get into this like mock fight. Right. Mm-hmm. And then he's all like, uh, they like hit him and he likes, like acts like he's going down and they yank him up and he jumps in their arms and he's like, let me take a nap. And he's like, Oh, nope, I'm good. And then jumps back down and just starts like, all right, I'm they, all right. They did that like three or four times. Yeah, so what's the whole let me take a nap, I feel good thing when he's lifting the air all about? Do you have any idea? I, like, I, get, get, Give me some zingers here because I got nothing. you've given me the thing for the waffles and the other stuff, just random ideas. It's like, that kind of makes sense. If, if I had to guess, um, that was Cantor's thing. Like that was his shtick or that may have been like his, his catch, you know, catch for yeah. or whatever. I'm guessing. I don't know. I didn't bother to, I mean, I was bothered enough by this movie that i really didn't want to look that much more into it uh yeah so that that really annoyed me but um eventually as they're going through the stuff and she's it finally comes out that no i wasn't eloping with him i just didn't want to get married to you i want to get married to Winnie's, blah 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 right and i know i'm kind of skipping over some stuff here but nothing's really happening other than really really bad wannabe comedy um Black Eagle finally decides to reveal they had the big that, reveal that uh, Waninus was essentially adopted uh, into the Indian tribe. He, he found found an because orphan because he was actually a white orphan baby that they just raised, mm-hmm. and they're just like, "Oh my God, I'm white! Fuck yeah!" And he gets to go marry Sally. Mm-hmm. So there's this huge celebration that this guy doesn't have Indian blood. Yep. I, I <laughs> like I said, I I got nothing, man. I I this was not I, I whatever. <laughs> I yeah. I don't know what to say. Like the whole the whole movie, I didn't. I mean, we might as well just skip to the end. I'm pretty sure everybody's picking up on what we're laying down here. Didn't enjoy it. Don't want to watch it ever again. Could not care less. I was not a fan. Yeah, he, he, here's my thought on Whoopi. No, you almost made that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a trash can over there. I didn't know. I was just throwing it over the camera. <laughs> yeah. No, it um, didn't enjoy it. I didn't find it funny in any capacity. I'm. It was uncomfortable. I didn't. I mean, if you want to play the whole like you know history angle, fine. Mm-hmm. Not something I'm. I'm ever going to want to watch no. ever again. I no. don't care. It, it can be lost to the annals of history. If if you guys are interested in that type of stuff, that's fine. Go watch it. Or actually, if you're watching this now, then odds are you may have watched it. Um, didn't enjoy it. 
I, I don't know if they will. Someone might. I'm, yeah. Whatever. I don't care. Right. If you disagree or have any yeah, other just, thoughts you want to add, by all means, let us know. But Yeah, please let us know. Um, I, I didn't enjoy it. Not a bit. No, I was not a fan at all. What do you want to do next? Hell's Angels or the Dawn Patrol? So the World War One fighter air fighter movie or the other World War One air exactly. fighter movie? <laughs> <laughs> you pick. Don't matter. No, nah, no, nah, I picked the whoopee first. I got that garbage out of the way as soon as we could. So pick you something. Pick the whoopee. Okay. Um, let's do Dawn Patrol. Alrighty. So um, Dawn Patrol was directed by Howard Hawks. I like that name. Don't know who he is, but I like that name. Um, it is starring Richard Bartholomew. Bartholomew? Maybe. Uh, as Dick Courtney. Uh, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. as Douglas Scott, so it's probably easy to remember his name. That, that's sheet. a big actor right there. Is it? Yeah. Uh, fair he enough. He was a big name back in the day. Uh, and Neil Hamilton as Major Brand. Um, those are the, the biggest characters. There's a number of others, but those are the big th- three, I would say. It had a production bug... For bed ship shin schmetic okay. Take take your time. Um production Sound it out. budget of seven hundred and twenty nine thousand and a box office of one million. So it just barely made its money back. Um plus a, an extra third. Um <laughs> plus an extra third. <laughs> uh yeah. So the Dawn Patrol. Um do want to bring this up real quick before we actually break into the story. So, when the Warner Brothers Library was sold to Associated Artists in 1956 uh, for the television broadcast, the title was changed to Flight Commander, mm-hmm. uh, which is actually the name of the book that uh, the Dawn Patrol was adapted from. But that was in order to avoid confusion with the 1938 remake of The Dawn Patrol. Um, and then probably for this same reasoning, uh, it actually still retains the new title of flight commander in the Turner classic films library. Uh, and in most cable and like other off screen guides and sources and everything like that, it's listed as flight commander, but it was originally the Dawn patrol. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was interesting. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. They, They don't want people, well, I mean, considering this movie came out in 1930, and, and then they, they remade, remade it, it less later. than 10 years later. <laughs> you think you want to give a little more breathing room, but nope. Nope, not this time. <laughs> We're going to milk that baby for all it's worth. Oh, goodness. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, something else that I thought was interesting. So, Neil Hamilton, who is Major Brand, I was like, he looks somewhat familiar, but I couldn't place it, so I looked him up. Uh, he actually played Commissioner Gordon in the 66 Batman. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I I was, was, I was like, cool. he looks somewhat... F- oh, I get it yeah. now. It, it's just, just the white hair he had in Batman. Yeah, you, you just gotta add 30 years, and then I'm like, got it. Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> Pow, zap. Um, in this one, um, just a quick re- synopsis here. Like, we have Dick Courtney, who's, like, pissed off their leadership, um, and his superior officer because of how, like, they're handling... The uh, the um... pilots. <laughs> the pi- That's the word that escaped you. Well, I was gonna do something more fancy, but I'm just like uh, t- uh, t- uh, t- uh, the pilot. Um, the people that fly the airplanes. <laughs> yeah, the people that go pew 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 as they're flying. Uh, <laughs> the people that fly the planes. Um, but yeah, like because they were losing a lot of um, pilots. <laughs> Sorry, I have to do it again. Good job, buddy. Uh, <laughs> But so all their experienced uh, pilots were... Oh, I'm going to stop doing that. Okay, so all the experienced pilots were actually, like, you know, dying because of all these really bad missions. They're not having enough downtime, etc. And they so they're having younger and younger pilots come out. And they're just... He's getting mad because, like, you know, all these people are dying. We shouldn't be going out yet. We shouldn't be doing this. Um, so that's kind of the where the plot kind of starts. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's it's a lot of... Based around, like, planes and in this, like... Uh, bar area that they kind of spend their downtime in. Um, quick side note: each time we hear the planes, uh, they sound like a bad fart. Um, they <laughs> that's I mean that's somewhat accurate. Yeah, I was like I was like eh, the audio maybe been degraded a bit, but I was just 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, this you know movie's ninety years old. Yeah. Uh, but I felt like that idea is kind of understandable because like you're you're pissed off at your superior because you know all these people are dying, right? Well, they they send you out on these night missions and they'll send you out in squads of six or seven and then two, and they seem three, to not care. four of them don't come back. Yeah. Um, feel free to break down the plot further for this, but to me, I could probably talk through this movie in five minutes. <laughs> a lot of it wasn't, I mean, the plot itself. Not because was, it was bad. It was just no, like it was, a it was lot very of straightforward. Yeah. Um, was you had, you know, uh, Courtney getting pissed off at Major Brand. Um, you know, the, the, the whole, the, they, they kind of set it up to where, um, they were at each other's throats for all this stuff. Um, and I'm trying to recall if it was this movie or the other one where like there was a woman involved and like she picked Courtney. So Brand had him out for that. Was that this movie or was that the other one? Oh, I think you're talking about Hell's Angels. Hell's Angels. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. That should They're be very there, similar in, yeah. in certain regards. Um, but yeah, so like the whole like I'm pissed off at my CO for you know sending us out on suicide missions, um, and uh, eventually got to the point where Brand was promoted, and then they moved Courtney up to that that position of you know sending people out on on their own missions, and him getting running into the same kind of deals where Brand is like, there's nothing I can do, my hands are tied. Yeah. And then Courtney runs into the same thing where he's pissed off and, you know, he's drunk all the time and runs into the same situation. Like, well, this, you know, I'm sorry, my hands are tied. Yeah, because he didn't know before he got, uh, before the Major Brand got promoted and he had to take the spot. Because Major Brand was essentially like, I'm tired of you yelling at me. I'm out here trying to, you know, tell the superiors to stop doing this shit, but I have to follow orders as well. Right. And so I've recommended you as my replacement. Um, and that allowed, uh, Courtney to really see what, uh, Major Brand had been going through, which is essentially, he's now on the line with all these, you know, higher up saying like, no, we can't do this. Like people are dying. You can't do this. Uh, and then his superiors are just saying like, you have a fucking order, you're going to follow it. And so he's now having to send these like kids that he knows are going to die off on this mission. And there, there, yeah, there was one that there was one scene that kind of stuck with me on this, where like they sent in this new batch of recruits, and he's like, "How much combat time do you have?" And they're like, six hours." Yeah, four and they're just hours. like, "What the hell?" Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was it was this interesting kind of dealing with your duty uh, to you know your the, your superiors and like dealing with your duty to the the military you're in and everything mm-hmm. like that, weighed against knowing you're sending these people to die. Mm-hmm. Not even a, oh, they might die. It's like, no, they're going, they're going, to, going, it's going to die. At some point, it's going to happen. Not even at some point. Like, those ones like that, like, he knew, like, you have no real experience at all. Yeah. And I'm having to send you off to this mission where I know you're going to die. Um, that part was, like, it, it, it stuck out to me, like, having to deal with that. Because, to be honest, I don't know if I could do that. Like, um, I'm not even willing to go into management because I don't feel like I'd want to, like, fire somebody. That's a big step away from I'm telling you to go do this knowing you're going to die. Right. And I'm like, I just, I can't imagine what people uh, are going through that have to deal with that. Well, that's, that's, I mean, that's kind of something that they, that both for Brand and Courtney that they were, that they weren't dealing with it very well. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, they were drunk 24-7. Yeah, yeah, they're having to drink all the time. Yeah, I get that. Um, another thing I thought was interesting. So, there was a German that had, like, shot down some of their friends. And then later on, that German is shot down by them, and they bring him to the bar and are just having drinks with him, uh, just being super civil. And I'm like, that stuck out as weird to me. That's but I mean, you're more of the history buff. Do you know if that was kind of like the thing treating them with such civility, like buddy buddy? I don't know if that specific thing happened, at least in World War One. But it is it is a very well known thing for um, uh, POWs that you because anytime that you get someone um from you know the side that you're fighting you're going to try to extract intelligence out of them Mm -hmm. and um there was one um interrogator 
in at least at a later war, but I would assume it would apply here or the same techniques where they would get way more information out of them if they were nice and civil to them versus, you know, other more, True. um, other more aggressive techniques. Cause I mean, people are, you know, especially if you get them plied up with enough liquor, they're going to let some stuff slip. Yeah. I didn't think of it from that aspect, but yeah, it would make sense. Um, I do want to talk about one of the aerial flight scenes that was actually before Courtney got, you know, forced to be promoted. Uh, it was a scene where uh, Major Brand had said, like, they're sending all these people, all these planes out to go bomb something. And they're like, no, it's a suicide run for all these people. Like, why? This is stupid. We can't do this. And so, excuse me, uh, Dick Courtney and Douglas Scott, like, steal some planes and go off on their own, just mm-hmm. the two of them, and go and bomb this German area. And uh, that scene was, like, kind of fun, like, when they're out there just, like, dropping bombs on and shooting. Smiling and, and like laughing that. and yeah. stuff, yeah. But one plane, I don't remember whose it was, but one plane was shot down behind enemy lines. Uh, and so the other plane, like, swoops down, lands next to him, uh, and the person that was in the plane that got shot down... Uh, jumps on and holds on to the plane like Tom Cruise style. Yeah. And the plane like takes off again. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was pretty interesting. I was like, oh, that looks like a fun. Uh, but then they're, they're actually both shot down uh, again. And there's like, while they're going down, there's oil spraying in the guy's face. Mm-hmm. And he had goggles on. And he chose to take the goggles off <laughs> while there's oil spraying in his face to wipe his face. And I'm like, now it's in your eyes. That makes no sense. You had goggles. But they didn't, like, land and are able to skate and get back home before he... And that's when he eventually gets promoted, too. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, Courtney then learns, essentially... He's getting promoted. ...what it's like to be the commander. Uh, but <laughs> when it comes to taking command, he was like, I can't do it. Okay, I'll do it. That was well, a quick like, turnaround. <laughs> well, like, the, the boss had told him, like, um, like, as far as one of the... Uh, it was either the mission or the promotion. And, like, he's going he's gonna to yell. He's going to say, I'm not going to do it. And then 10 seconds will go by, and then he'll say, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And then that's exactly what happened. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I can't do it. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because of being in that leadership position, uh, his buddy that he'd flown with, Douglas Scott... His like little brother shows up, and he's one of the brand new recruits that only has like a few hours of you know combat time and training and stuff. Uh, and he has to, because of the orders he has from his superior, send his buddy's brother off to die. And that just reinforced that it's really a story of like the pressures of command mm-hmm. and like the the psychological. Well, the the pressures of command and the 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 gears of uh, gears of war, because yeah. like Brand was drunk all the time from having to do that, and then Courtney gets promoted, and then he he's in the exact same situation, and it's just you know the the cycle never ends. Yeah. Side note: I need to soundproof my office. <laughs> <laughs> I keep hearing the kids, and I'm just like, oh. Um. Also, like, <laughs> I just had this little side note. Everyone has the same dramatic I got shot while flying face. <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's it. That's it right there. I was going to act it out, but you already know it. Uh-huh. It's just, it doesn't matter where they got shot. How was you like? <laughs> I was like, why do they always hit you right in the chest? Every single time. You don't get shot in the leg. It's always. <laughs> I don't know. Ow, my ass. <laughs> um, and then uh, like, there's like this like last big hurrah thing happening is that like the the big mission yeah um and they said that the petrol had been laid uh and i, I can't remember was that to, so they that was that was land at, the, at night right that was at the end so yeah. like there was that one big mission that they needed a volunteer for that was essentially a certain you know suicide mission and he he like his his buddy had volunteered like i'll do it and then, like, they got him drunk the night before. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. Courtney's like, And then Courtney goes out and does it. Um, what they were doing... Um, so, it, something I've noticed a lot with these World War One fighter movies that we've been watching. The the big bad villain was always the Flying Circus. Uh, the um, Rick Tovers or, or whatever, whatever pseudonym they used. Um, all of them were based off the actual 
Um, have you heard of the Red Baron? Yeah. Only that's, because of Snoopy, but yeah. That's that's who it was based on. There was a German fighter ace named Manfred von Richthofen, who was known as the Red Baron. Um, he had 88 confirmed shootdowns. Damn. And all of them, and his his flight his fighter squad one was known as the Flying Circus, because mm. just because of how um, colorfully painted their planes were, um, that's that's who basically all of these villains are based off was him. Hmm. Well, they had said that petrol had been laid. They they but were then waiting. You for... see them pouring it after Scott says to light it. He's like, "All right, light it," and you still see him running around pouring it. And I'm like, yeah. eh. That 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 was that was to try to help him land on, as he was coming back. Yeah, um, I can't remember. Did he? He he died. I was I was like I was like it's it's been a longer minute since I watched this than you. So I'm like, uh, but yeah, I thought like he died, and like Scott was like right before he died. Scott was like pissed at him because of letting his brother he, go he off he and took, die. Yeah, but then after he dies, Scott. Is like now promoted and has to take command and deal with and the same shit. And then start the cycle so all over again. Exactly, the cycle continues with, I'm so pissed off at these people. Oh shit! Now I get it. Yeah, and now now he goes out, orders everyone. You're probably not coming back. You're probably not coming back. And mm. yeah, like I said, the cycle continues. Yeah. Um. I didn't. I didn't hate this movie. Um. I actually. Uh. Liked it for the most part. Uh. Didn't have a whole lot of issues with it i mean other than like it being a movie of its time uh so not always the up to snuff dialogue and right. <laughs> special effects that i see in movies today but keeping in mind of when it was made i was like I actually enjoyed it it had a it was more than just a random thing they threw on the screen it it like we said dealt with some some deeper issues there yeah i i, I enjoyed it as well um there there were a couple of things i mean some of the the the, the fighter scenes or the flying scenes i thought were pretty cool um, but the, the overall message, which that's, that's what really resonated with me for mm-hmm. this particular one. Um, similar to, um, cause we had talked previously about all quiet on the Western front, the same kind of deal. Some of those things that, it, that really, the messages is what grabbed you. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, so we have one more movie to go through. And it's going to almost sound like we're talking about the same movie again at certain parts. There are some key differences. <laughs> there are, there are. Um, so we have Hell's Angels. Uh, this one is directed by Howard Hughes. The Howard Hughes. The Howard Hughes. Had a production budget of two point eight million. He it's th- during the production for this. He he was he was very well known. He spared no expense. It mm. didn't matter how expensive it was, how expensive the stunt was, the shot was. Didn't matter. He wanted it. Yeah. Um. They spent three years filming this movie to make every because he was a he was. Um, very meticulous about how he wanted things. And if it didn't work, we're going to do it again until I get what I want. Mm-hmm. And so, it, yeah, it took a three full years for them to make it. it. didn't help anything when they started filming it. It was a silent movie. And then they, when the jazz singer came out, like, oh, now I want it with sound. Yeah. So, and then they have to start all over again. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, well, the, all that uh, work did not help because the box office only made $1.6 million. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so it, 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 was it was an expensive, expensive movie. Yeah. Uh, but it stars Ben Lyon as Monty Rutledge, James Hall as Roy Rutledge, Jean Harlow as Helen. The blonde bombshell original, Jean mm-hmm. Harlow. Yeah, there, there there, are other, you know, characters in this, but those are the main three we're paying attention to. Can you guess why? Hmm, there's a shape involved here. Uh, <laughs> so. Perhaps a triangle. Uh, it was directed by Howard Hughes, but um, I don't know if they were... Like, uh, on uh, location directors or B directors or what, but uh, apparently it also has Edmund Golding and James Whale that were uncredited in the director spot. Uh, the <laughs> It's funny you mentioned that because I was, when you're talking about Howard Hughes and him, mm-hmm. like, I want this done a specific way. Because um, I had this note that there were stunt pilots uh, that refused to perform an aerial sequence that the director wanted. So Hugh said, fuck it, did the flying himself, mm-hmm. and got the shot, but he also crashed the plane. <laughs> and he, he, um, he ended up with a, with a fractured skull because of, because of that injury, oh, yeah. which, which ended up being, um, aside from the fact that he was a major germaphobe, OCD, um, he went really not well 
for the last couple of years of his life. Yeah. Um, it's, it was well, like he would get super obsessive about particular movies. Um, in the 1970s, there was one that he watched called uh, I Station Zebra. And the, uh, the story was that he had watched it 156 times in a row. He was absolutely Jeez. obsessed with it. Um, he would also lay, like, he wouldn't stay at home. He'd rent out hotel rooms for indefinite amount of time. Um, he would just lie in, in a room with like, uh, just a, like a tissue paper covering his, his, uh, parts and then just watch movies, hmm. um, like pee in jars and set them off to the side. And, you know, he just had a big mental break. Um, but he was that, that, that type of behavior, like the, the obsessive, like I need this and I, how I want it didn't help how that, that whole thing progressed. Yeah, no, some of these, uh, like we watched this movie, it's directed by him. There was like some other movies we watched that were produced by him. Mm -hmm. Made me want to go back and watch The Aviator again just to be like, uh, like, I, I watched it once and I barely remember it. And I was like, oh, I'm curious if that was any good, if it has any of this. There, there were some scenes from The Aviator that, that showed him directing this. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's been a minute since I watched that. So I need to go watch it again. Um, there were more than 70 pilots used during the filming, three of which died during shooting. Mm -hmm. um, and to your point, the entire uh, movie had been filmed as silent, minus a soundtrack, yep. But uh, by uh, Hughes in 1928. But then when sound equipment became available, he decided to reshoot the whole film as a talkie. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was saying, like the no spared, no expense kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> I'm curious if they actually reshot the whole film though, because there were elements of it that seemed almost like it was dubbed with sound versus reshot because the spe speed of the film and the audio didn't sync right. But that could have also just been like the film was really old, and when they were trying to make, you know, digital copies, maybe something fucked up. I don't know, but mm -hmm. it just something. Yeah, it was it was restored off. by somebody. Yeah. Um, no, it was it was interesting to see, like, because it was at least from from what I know. It was one of the first like major war epics, aside from like All Quiet on the Western Front, at least on that scale. Um, you, you mentioned that there were several stunt pilots and a couple of mechanics had died mm -hmm. while they were filming this. Um, the movie was praised pretty highly for its its accuracy as far as World War One dogfights go. All right, that's cool. Um, well, breaking into the actual story of the film, um, as I recall, it kind of. Starts in like almost like a little cafe kind of area. Or they, were, they were in Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're in Germany, um, and they're eating. Um, I think it was Monty and Roy were eating with Carl. Mm -hmm. uh, he was their their local German buddy. Uh, well, uh, I don't remember, I don't remember which one of them said it, but they said I keep forgetting you're not British, um, because it says Carl went to Oxford, but he. He would still have a German accent, right? It, Wouldn't maybe. you know that he's not British when he talks? It depends. Uh, it, um, you can, I mean, as with actors, you can change accents depending on who you're with. And maybe he just decided to, to keep the English part of his uh, I, I suppose. I mean, Christian Bale, I guess, will remove his accent when Man, he's doing that, interviews for a movie. <laughs> I forget he's actually has an English accent. <laughs> I forget you are British. Mm -hmm. uh, even though, is he British or is he Australian? I don't remember. He's British. Um, I think, no. Well, shit, I don't know. You got me questioning. We'll look it up later. He's got an accent that is not American. There you go. Naturally. We know that. But when he's doing his interviews for an American movie, he like sticks with his normal accent. So when you hear him talking with, uh, or with an American accent, when you hear him talking with his actual accent, you're like, whoa, it kind of yeah. hits you off guard because the fact that he does that, which I think is like almost like a commitment to your craft. Hugh, Hugh Laurie's like that too. He what? Hugh Laurie. Oh yeah? Like he, he has a thick English accent, but you'd never know it. Hmm. Well, that, that's neither here nor there. No, but, but <laughs> since, since we were talking about it. Yeah, yeah, no. No, I just meant like we're going off on a tangent. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. let me refer we, we this back that. here. We do that sometimes. Um, so, the, I'm going to try to get through this here. Um, at one point, uh, the, the, the Baron, uh, he, he catches his wife cheating on him with Monty Rutledge. Mm -hmm. Uh and it took me a minute to figure out what was going on. Because he just kind of walks in and he's like, okay, here's my card. And I thought he was just handing him a business card. I'm like, you just caught your wife bent over getting crazy, even though that's not what we actually saw. But, you know, you caught your wife in the throes of love with another man and you give him your business card? And it wasn't until later on I'm like, 
was this card to say, hey, we're dueling because there is a duel scheduled for later. In, in, their, in their custom, apparently. Yeah, and so Monty goes back to, you know, the, the like, room, hotel, the hotel whatever yeah. it is, that he's there with Roy, his brother, and he's like, oh, yeah, some guy gave me this, and he puts it down, uh, and Roy picks it up, and he's like, oh, I guess I gotta go do this, and Roy goes and duels with the Baron. Yeah, the, the dude that actually got caught just left, and then the, the, the Baron's people showed up, and they thought that his brother was the dude. But there was something going on with the, the, the Roy didn't think he was like being taken wrongly. He thought he had to be part of the duel for some reason because he thought he was like dueling somebody I else. Didn't, I didn't get it either. Like I, my my thought was that like oh my brother screwed up, so I'm gonna have to step in and fix his problem. But it did. The whole scene didn't make any sense. Well, there, there was something along the lines of like they thought that they caught up with him for a reason. I don't remember what that reason was. <laughs> But they thought, Roy thought they had caught up with him and like the card was for him. But I'm just like, fucking what, what, huh? I don't know. Um, it did, the whole scene didn't make any sense to me. But they made sure to have the duel at night so that the Baron couldn't see Roy to know there was the wrong guy. And Roy couldn't see the Baron to know yeah. it was the wrong guy. Anyways. Anyway, yeah, then he gets shot in the arm. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah, Roy gets shot in the arm and they're like, all right, we're good. Uh, and they all kind of go back to their lives. And Roy is telling Monty, his brother, about, like, Helen, this girl he's been seeing. And he really wants Monty to, to, to meet her. And for some reason, Monty has, like, no interest in meeting her. And I thought it was going to eventually be because maybe he already knew her and they had fooled around and he's, like, trying to avoid it. Uh, but, no, apparently that's not the case. I just thought it was weird that he was not wanting to see her so much. Uh, but they're at Oxford. Uh, and the mailman... At Oxford shows up to give um, Carl like his papers to come back to Germany because they're about to go into war. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why did the mailman at Oxford have a German accent when delivering mail to Carl? No idea. Maybe, because maybe, if maybe. it was someone from the German government coming to collect Carl, that would make sense. Okay, but I wouldn't think you'd be delivering mail outside of your country as a mailman. I mean, yeah, it would make sense. They've gone sense. global with their mail delivery service. <laughs> no, it would make it would make sense, like you said, if it was if it was someone from the government, like if if he was, you know, uh, uh, one of the I don't know um, premiers kids or something like that that they sent to study abroad, and like, well, mm -hmm. now you got to serve, go get them. But outside of that, I I don't have any clue. Yeah, well, we're eventually going to find out Carl's uh, reason for being the story is there isn't one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're not wrong. Because <laughs> he gets sent back to Germany. And then it refocuses on Roy and Monty. Uh, and, like, they're going to a party. Um, and... I, I can't remember what the reason for the party. There's, like, there's like a fundraiser for something. Um, That's not... Yeah, that was right. Yeah, and uh, Monty... Actually, which one? I'm, I forget... I'm, Forgetting you which mix one. them up. Yeah, like Monty, it's hard. It's easy to mix up Monty and Roy. I'm like, which one was the one who was actually with her? Uh, Roy was the one that was with her. Yeah, he was the one, he was the one okay. that was with her. So Roy is there as like some like decorated person of this little like organization to help do activities for the party. And the Helen <laughs> is fooling around with another man in the bushes uh, and just like comes on out after fooling around. And, like, and I didn't catch that at first. I was like, God, it almost looked like they were fooling around. Why'd they do that? Yep. Um, like, why'd she come out of the bushes? Come to find out that's exactly what they were going for. Um, and then she meets Monty, and Roy has to go take care of whatever stuff for the party. And she, like, springs on Monty and starts kissing him the first chance she gets. Yep. And I'm like, is this girl in fucking heat or what? Jesus. <laughs> um, well, it's, the, it's the, like, they, they exp she explains it a little bit later in the movie. Like, she doesn't want to get tied down. She just wants to have fun, that type of thing. Um, those types of attitudes for women for in movies in those days were not generally tolerated. Um, so it was it was kind of a big deal mm -hmm. that I mean that she made a whole career out of herself, yeah, or for herself. But you know, based on that that type of thing, um, there was the the one line that she um, you, you'll you'll probably get to it. But since I'm since I'm thinking about it, was the Here's whole it. like, would you be shocked if I slipped into something more comfortable? 
that's all of that that trope that you hear that's where it started yeah was was from that yeah i mean and i'm all for giving a realistic story of a woman in the sense that like she's not well i'm I'm only here to you know get married and have kids and clean your house like like she can actually be her own woman right but it just seemed unbelievable like penis 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 (laughs) like every chance she got she's like grabbing at some guy and i'm like wow um but roy gets pulled away again and he's forced to dance with somebody and I'm, i'm curious was the brunette he was dancing with was that a man in a dress it looked that way I don't know for sure. Because it, it never, you never see her, her him, whatever, again. Um, but I, I just couldn't tell. I was like, was that just like a, a masculine woman? Or was there a man in a dress? And was there eventually supposed to be a reason for that that got cut? Because that made no sense. No idea. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of had the same thought, if I remember right. But, it, it I mean, obviously I don't care. But it, it just... They they never showed that particular character again. Just, just like they never showed... Um, in the in the first scene when they showed uh, Carl and the the two brothers there with what's her name that latched on to one of them and wouldn't leave and yeah same kind of deal. Well, I think I think we see her later. Um, but yeah, so he's busy with the party, and so and we're back on track. Yeah, <laughs> and so Monty is essentially put in charge of taking Helen home, and <laughs> they get to her house and she's like, "Want to come up for a cigarette and a drink?" I don't like what you really mean is a mouth hug and some sex. Uh, yes. <laughs> and Monty's like, all right. And sure. Just, yeah, let, let's do this. Uh, and goes up and I was just like, he's a horrible fucking brother. Cause yep. he goes ahead and, you know, get, gets his uh, thingamadeal uh, a little moist. Um, <laughs> sorry. Could you have put in that any other way? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, Fine. He 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 takes her to town, and <laughs> uh, we're just okay. Moving on. He, he he rails her. Is that better? I don't know. Uh, dude, goes up they, for some lovin's. They, they 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 have relations. That works. That works. He did have <laughs> relations with after that woman. they're done. After he's done cheating, uh, having Helen like cheat on her quote unquote boyfriend, like and like screwing over his brother. Yes. Then all of a sudden he's like. Then he feels you're better. you're a bad person cheating on my brother like he didn't have a problem with it until after he had had his finishing move um and suddenly like she's a horrible person yeah terrible uh, uh. i mean is, is that what all we men are it's like we we're all for getting our our pudding pops until we're like <laughs> then suddenly we have a problem with it once we've you finished get, you the get jelly that, donut <laughs> <laughs> You get that post finish mind clarity. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, hey, 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 there is a thing that, uh, that like a lot of comedians talk about it. Like, right after you go, that's the the most like shameful you'll ever feel. So he just got his whole body flooded with shame. And he's yep. just like, you're a horrible person there's, for making me do this. I don't know what it is. I, I, and I, I don't know if I'd be able to pronounce it, but there's actually a Japanese word for that, for that feeling. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, I, I'll have to look it up. I can. I'll. I'll, I'll uh, Take a stab at pronouncing it, dude. I'm not even gonna try. No. No. I, I'd, I'd have to look it up so I could even try. Fair enough. Um, we're, we're busy at the moment. <laughs> All right. So, eventually, that gets kind of shoved under the rug for a minute, and they're going off to war. Suddenly, they yeah, they, I, they enlisted in the Royal Flying Corps. Mm-hmm. Uh, and. I thought it was really interesting, and I was hoping you had some information on this. The the listening device that was like spinning around, like a little turret kind of thing. Mm-hmm. There was the listening device that heard the zeppelin coming. Yeah. The fuck was that? the The idea behind that machine was um, kind of like an early because like, there was like a guy sitting in it and turning and yeah, it was it was kind of like an early um, you know like if you're watching like a football game or something like that, and you got those people on the side with those big domes. It's, yeah, it's basically a big microphone. Um, same kind of deal. He was listening for um, planes, like the propellers mm-hmm. and the engines and stuff like that, so he could give a general direction of where this thing was. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. I'd never seen anything mm-hmm. like that, and I was like, what the hell is that? Mm-hmm. God ask Tony. He's yeah, going to know what yeah, the fuck it's, it's this like is. A, it's like a big microphone. Oh, that's cool. Um, so we end up finding out that 
on the Zeppelin that's coming to bomb some of the... London. After yeah. Trafalgar Square. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Carl is on that Zeppelin. Mm-hmm. And he gets put in this little ship that gets dangled way down under the Zeppelin below the clouds. And he's like the spotter looking through shit to see where to bomb. And having, you know, gone to Oxford and stuff like that, he doesn't want to bomb London. So they're just like, yeah, we're there. And they're on, like in the middle of nowhere over like a lake. And it was over the, drop, over the water, yeah. Yeah, just drop all the bombs in the in the water. Um, I just thought it was funny the little ship he was hanging from. <laughs> <laughs> the, the little thing, the little the little sidecar. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But also, it would show inside the zeppelin, and then it'd be like like twelve bombs go shoo 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 shoo, shoo like that all the way down the little row, and then there's like two little explosions in the water. Mm-hmm. And like, did all were all the other bombs duds? Maybe, perhaps, because <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not a good. Working bomb to non-working or, bomb or ratio. Or maybe it was just to move things along, because they showed two dropping. Why do they need to show all 12? But but they showed all 12 dropping, so show 12 booms. They don't need to show all booms. But but that makes me notice that you dropped 12 bombs and only two booms. You got the point from the two. That, that he hit the water. But it makes me question reality. <laughs> what doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Um... So, um, eventually, I think, like, they, they, they find the Zeppelin, and, like, planes are coming in to try to shoot it down. Part, I think part the Rutledge the, brothers the, were there. Yeah, the brothers were there, because they, they woke them up, and they were hung over and didn't want to fly. <laughs> yeah, um, and then they're, they essentially go, like, they're just like, goodbye, Carl, and, like, not Rutledge brothers, but the people in the Zeppelin, like, goodbye, Carl, and just, like, cut the line and just drop his ass. They, they were, they were Because they couldn't, to... like, pull him up quick enough. So well, he would, yeah, it was dragging them down. They couldn't go fast, and it in the end it didn't matter. But like the whole like they're like, uh, well, how come we're not going as fast as we should be? Well, the car and Carl. the cable is slowing us down. Well, get rid of Carl. So then they cut the cable, and they just show. He's just like, hey, hello, anybody? And then and he's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then like we're still not going fast enough. We'll throw everything. No, 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 out no, 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 no. Let's get to that in a second, because um, I want to make one comment first. Is that the only reason we saw Carl at the beginning of the film is so that we could actually give a shit that he was dropped off right there? Uh, that would make sense. Because he, he was literally just there at the beginning. Oh, I keep forgetting you're not British. And you're dead. Yeah, he was He was there. That was it. I mean, um, yeah, it, w- it would make sense that we're like, oh, I know that, and never mind. Yeah. But um, you don't, you're not really there. You don't really build that kind of relationship with that character because he's yeah. there for like eight minutes and then you see him again like, oh, I know that, dude. And then he's gone. <laughs> womp womp. Um, <laughs> but yeah, to your point, like, they're like, we're still not going fast enough. So he, he orders all the, the troops to just start jumping out of the, the Zeppelin. That, that, that was... And I had a, I, I thought this was funny. It was almost like an, oh, captain, my captain moment. Because they're all like, huh, and just for, jump out. <laughs> yeah, for the, you know, one of them was like for the fatherland and then jumped out. And, yeah. Um, then everybody jumped out and like, well, okay. <laughs> like because um, it, it still didn't matter in the end and uh, like they uh, the zeppelin had shot down the you know the squadron that had gone after him but there was some you know some lucky shot that blew him up yeah um the two brothers had like crash landed like oh we made it we made it and then the zeppelin blows up and then they got to run away from the thing that's crashing i literally have a comment about that they literally saw the zeppelin falling right at them and just like it's going down huh well you look we at did that. it we did a good job Oh, shit. Wait, is that... <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Ah! I mean, that was a cool special effect shot, the whole, like, dropping and blowing up. and. But but it was also the... Uh... Oh, God, what is it called? Uh... Are you thinking of the Hindenburg? No, 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 no. <laughs> they're, they're... So there's this, like, YouTube channel like would make fun of, uh, like, movies and shit that I used to watch. Uh, and I, I can't remember if it's called the Prometheus style of running, but essentially the, the idea that like something's coming down like this and instead of going, Oh shit. Instead of running sideways, My problems, you instead run of running straight. sideways to like let it fall between you, you yep. just keep running straight. So it's like, ah, yep. I, I remember there was like a shot in Prometheus that did that. I don't remember. There was, yeah. You had two characters running, running away from that, the giant rotating donut alien ship that had they split up and ran perpendicular, they'd have been fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I lost my spot. Oh, oh yeah, it took Roy and Monty forever to dodge oh, no. the thing. 
Uh, and then we find, so they go back to, you know, wherever they're stationed, uh, the brothers do, without any knowledge of Carl's death. Um, he's never brought up again. Yeah, he, we, yeah, he, he's, he's just gone. Um, uh, but we find out that Helen got stationed where Roy and Monty are, uh, and she's, like, working the bar and flirting with all the guys and still won't just tell Roy the truth. Yep. That she's like, I don't want to date you. Do you have any theories as to why she would keep that a secret? Because every other guy knows she's just down for, like, spreading them for everybody. But keeps him there and doesn't tell him that she doesn't want that. And they're not even having sex, if I'm not mistaken. No, he, he was just obsessed with her. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, I, I don't... I mean, you could make the argument that maybe he was buying her things and she didn't want to lose that. I I don't know. I, yeah. I, I would just be throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah, no, I'm... Um... I, I will say that at this point, as I'm going through all this stuff and some of the shots I was seeing, I was like, Howard Hughes is not a good director. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, there's some cool elements to this. I'll give you that. But pe- piecing all those together, wow, yeah. piecing all those together and actually making a cohesive story. Was it's it's not well. an easy thing to do. And it, it's, it's. Oh, no, I, I will fully say, like, I don't think I could do this either. Yeah, it's it's the whole but. it's the it's the Richard Hammond type of you know throwing money at a problem. Yeah, isn't isn't going to end up with a working solution. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, sparing no expense doesn't mean that you have you know a, a, a perfect movie. It's just not that doesn't work that way. Yeah, but eventually they find Helen getting drunk uh, in a bar with like, the with the English officer that she was dude. flirting with right before they showed up. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, Monty's having to take care of Roy after finding Helen with another man. And I'm like, you hypocritical piece of shit. Yep. You did her too. Yep. Um, but then while they're off getting drunk, every single woman in the bar was, like, trying to get in the pants of one of the guys there. So it just made me wonder. I'm like, do the, does the director just see all women as nothing but places to put your stuff in? Or was it supposed to be that this bar was full of sex workers... Because of, you know, all the, the military there and trying to earn money. That's That wouldn't be surprising. Prostitution is kind of a big deal. I, and, and, and that's what made me think that, because they seemed desperate to keep the men there. And I'm like, if it was all sex workers, I get it. You know, go make your money, girl. Uh, but if it was the idea of like, oh, all these women want to do is like get a man to, to take care of them, then I was like, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, May have been a little, from, a little from column A, a little from column B, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it was one, but he just made it look accidentally like it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, they, they got drunk off their asses uh, an hour before this mission was supposed to go. It's incredibly responsible. Yet somehow in the mission, the next mission they were flying, they are completely sober. They had a shitload of coffee. I don't think it works that way. No. <laughs> Java does not negate the alcohol in your <laughs> bloodstream. No. Lots and lots of peeing might, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, even still, it's going to take, you know, a while. Yeah. But no, it, it, it that's one of those little loose, you know, plot holes kind of thing. They were trashed an hour ago, and now they're perfectly ready to go. No, sir. Yeah, yeah, no, not at all. Um, do you remember what their mission was? I know they were going to, like, bomb some it was a bomb. It was bomb a depot. It was, like, some, was. some ammo truck depot thing. Yeah, that's right, okay. Um, but, yeah, so during that bombing run, the German planes, which I assume is the whole the flying Baron circus, flying yeah. circus stuff, just watched them, just looking down at them, kept well, showing the, them. The watching plane the that they were place. flying was was dressed was. I, I know, in I know, colors. but once it starts dropping bombs, you'd think, oh, this is not who we think it is, and go after them. But they're just like, <laughs> and wait until they're completely done with their bombing run multiple times, and we're leaving to finally engage. Plot hole. Either yeah. that or like. I mean, maybe the, the, like, I could see it, like, the first one, like, oh, shit, you know, maybe something failed, but then other stuff starts blowing up, and then they're still just kind of like, eh, whatever, we didn't see it, ah, oh, shit, now I gotta do something. Yeah, but eventually, uh, they are shot down, and captured by the Germans, and they're wanting... You're, you're skipping over the whole big, like, dogfighting sequence. Well, I mean, you can go through the dogfighting sequence if you want. There's a big dogfighting sequence and they get shot down. I mean, was, it, yeah, is there I mean, some it, points it was, in there that you want to bring up? It was kind of important just, just because of, like like I said, it was... Go for it. 
um, it, it was very highly praised for its, for its authenticity. With, yeah. Like how how that shit actually played out. I, I thought it was important to mention. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned it at the top. That's why I glazed over. Well, I mean, you, but you want to bring like, it up this, again. This, by is, all means. this is where it happened in the movie. <laughs> well, that, that's true. Okay, that's true. There there was a lot of like that. The aerial fight sequence probably went on for at least ten minutes. Yeah, it was it was a big long sequence. I, yeah. I thought it was I thought it was cool actually. I, I thought it was going on too long. It, it was. I could see that. It was yeah. cool, but I was like, get, get some cuts in there. Yeah, can, can we move it along? <laughs> Come on, move it along. <laughs> I'm here for the story, not for just. We're, we're at an hour forty five. We got a lot to wrap up here. <laughs> but after the the, the the beautiful shots, it was cool. I liked it. They were shot down, <laughs> um, and they're like being like interrogated, trying to get information and whatnot. And Roy decides to go and talk to the the Baron, which ends up being the same guy at the beginning that he like fucked his wife. Um, but Roy went in there and. Uh, oh, sorry, actually, Monty was the one that fucked his wife, mm-hmm. but uh, Roy was in there talking to him, trying to get, he's like, I need two bullets, and I'll, like, make sure, if you give me these two bullets, I'm gonna go kill him, and then I'll give you whatever you want uh, um, for information. Um, and I'm trying to remember, what was the reasoning he gave for wanting two bullets? I know what he wanted them for. So, like, the, the reasoning was... Like, he's like, in case I miss or something like that? Yeah. The, like, you know, just to make doubly sure. But, like, the whole idea he went to the the general was, like, because he made him an offer. Like, tell me everything you know, and I'll put you in this nice little yeah. cushy camp. And, you know, at the end of the war, we'll be all buddy-buddy, and then you can go back home. Mm-hmm. Um, but his, his brother had, like, a panic attack and freak out. And he was going to give him. He was going to give him up, and you know they were going to get back home, and he was going to rat him out for being a traitor. Um, that's that's why he was wanting the the two. Yeah, because he was going to do like a murder suicide yep. thing. Um, but he was like, "No, you get one bullet, and just like make it count or whatever." So he goes in there and essentially shoots his brother in the back. Uh, yeah, shoots him in the back because he was all mad that you know his his brother had had slept with his his. Yeah, girlfriend, interest, revealed, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then he like held him in his arms as he was dying. And then let's do the little SpongeBob thing. Ten years later, <laughs> he finally it wasn't passes over away. the top. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't over the top that scene. Uh, but yeah, it, it took him for fucking ever to die, and they're just like, you know, I love you. I'm sorry, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, and then like he's like, all right, you killed him. Now give us some information. And he's like. Fuck you. And so he got taken out to the, the squad. And mm-hmm. then take him killed. out back and shoot him. Um, so it did make me wonder. And this is the reason I was like Howard Hughes was not a good director. There are pieces of this film that are interesting. But they don't seem to jive with each other. Which makes me wonder, was the film pieced together from... Howard Hughes's favorite scenes from a dozen different scripts. That he's like, oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Maybe, yeah. Push them together. Movie. Maybe that's that. I I don't know enough about the process of how this movie was written. Mm-hmm. Um, that that would I could see that that would make sense. Like I like that. I like that. I like that. Go with it. Yeah, cause, I mean that's definitely what it feels like. Because there it, are it, it is, there are a lot several of different stories in here. But none of them are fully fleshed out. Yeah, there's there's a lot. It's very disjointed. Yeah, but I mean, you you could, you could essentially take this movie and split it into like three different movies. Yep. And f- further flesh out that storyline. Uh. But yeah, I don't know. Um. Do you have any final thoughts you want to talk about on Hell's Angels? I mean, it was it was um it was fine for what it was. It was it was very disjointed. It it could have. There was a lot of woulda, coulda, shoulda, um, yeah. for that particular movie, um, but it was it was fine for a watch, and it, it's that's the first time I've ever actually seen like a Howard Hughes movie in start to finish mm-hmm. from you know from beginning to end. Um, with that in mind, I, I feel like I know where you're going to go with this, but I'm going to ask it anyway because it's part of the podcast. Um, the box office winner was Whoopi. Do you agree with the people that they spent their money on the right film? And that it should have won the box office? Do you really want me to say it? That's what we're here for. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I know your answer, but... No, they did not. They did not. Um, 
out of the three movies, or that I should say, out of the two alternates, do you which do you feel would have been the the better one to choose? Um, I mean, like cause you had the big spectacle of of Hell's Angels, but it really wasn't. Um, you could make the same argument for movies nowadays that are mm-hmm. like these big box office type of draws. You know, the big blockbusters. Um, they're very disjointed movies with a lot of cool shit thrown in there. Yeah. Um, I think that suffered from the same deal. I mean, they wanted this big tentpole epic kind of thing, but the actual like continuity of the story moving from point A to point B kind of got lost in the shuffle. Um, at least for me, out of those two, I I I preferred the Dawn Patrol just because it had more of a coherent story from start yeah. to finish. No, I, I totally agree. That's the one I would pick as well. Um, I feel like Hell's Angels could have potentially made a, a better run at being um, my choice if it, to your point, like had, didn't have all those disjointed stories and actually yeah. like pulled at one of those threads, fleshed it out, and gave you that story. Yeah. Uh, but no, I would agree, the Dawn Patrol. Um, so then that means we have one further question, and that being, if I recall correctly, both of us... Uh, agreed that All Quiet on the Western Front, which was the Oscar winner for that year, yep. was the correct choice by the Academy. And we, I believe we both liked that one best out of the three options we watched there. Mm-hmm. So now we need to figure out which was the better film. The Oscar choice that we had, which was All Quiet on the Western Front, or our box office choice, which is the Dawn Patrol. Uh, I'm I, At least for me, it's not a question. Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front. Yeah, that's that's my that's my choice hands down. I liked the Dawn Patrol and I liked its messaging. All Quiet on the Western Front was had similar messaging, but it was way more impactful. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, there's a part of me that wants to say All Quiet on the Western Front, and a part of me that wants to say Dawn Patrol. Uh, the reason being is I, I agree with your points that like they have a similar message, uh, and All Quiet on the Western Front was. A lot more of the psychological effects of warfare, mm-hmm. uh, but it was a long ass fucking movie, uh, and the Dawn Patrol didn't last as long. It, it was like an hour forty five, so it, it was more easily digestible. I get it, but the the psychological effects that are shown in both films, it's 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 kind of touched upon in the Dawn Patrol, whereas it's. Unless you're not paying attention, it's front and center and all quiet in the Western yeah. Front. It, it's it's right there, boom, in your face. So I think I would lean the same way and say that I agree. All Quiet on the Western Front was the uh, best film, uh, not only of the Oscars, but I think of uh, just the year for 1930 that we watched. Um Granted, we didn't watch every film ever made with release that year. No, no, but we, the we just we, we just we picked a, a handful. I mean, a good, a decent sample size. Yeah. So uh, this could be one of the rare times we agree that for the entire year, uh, All Quiet on the Western Front is is the better winner. Um, but yeah, so that's the 1930s finished. Uh, we'll be coming back with a 1931, uh, and we'll let you know what movies we're going to be watching uh, once we have those chosen. But uh, until then, I'm Jeffrey. I'm Anthony. Catch you in the movies.